Paul Darby this weekend, shall we? A young woman from Dundee who attracted worldwide attention after penning an open letter to her drug-addicted parents, thanking them for showing her that life can be tough. Well, last night she received the Young Scott of the Year Award and her story, it's very inspirational. Well, it got us talking about younger people. How do you define that? Well, younger people and the contributions they make to public life and their understanding of the world. We've got the council elections coming up next week, so we invited... Candidates who are under 30 to talk to us today. We'd love you to join in 80295 if you feel somebody young should get a, a shout out. We will talk now to 25 year old Max Mitchell, who is a Conservative candidate in Edinburgh. We've got 22 year old Ben Laurie standing in Angus for the Liberal Democrats. We've got 28 year old Katrina McKenzie. SMP candidate in Aberdeen and 25-year-old Dominic Maguire, who's standing for Labour in West Lothian. Hello to all of you. Hello. Hello. Thank, Thank you so much for coming on. Let's go through this then. So, Max, first, if I can ask all of you in one sentence, why did you go into politics? Um, well, it probably sounds a bit cliche, really, but it was obviously back in 2014 for a lot of Scots that um, were quite impassioned by the referendum. Um, someone I used to go out with at university worked for the Scottish National Party, um, and even though we had very <laughs> differing views, like it just it really inspired me that someone regular could get involved, um, and so I did. Like last year, I volunteered for Ruth Davidson's campaign, and um, then this year, I just thought I'd toss my hat in the ring for the council elections. Ben Laurie, why did you get involved in politics? Well, it was a single issue for me to begin with. I um, started off interested in mental health. I've suffered from sort of depression myself, so I wanted to get involved in politics, sort of tackle the issues that our mental health services are seeing through politics, and I just sort of branched out into other issues from there. Katrina, SNP candidate in Aberdeen, why did you get involved in politics? Uh, I think I got involved to try in any way that I can to make a positive change uh, firstly, in my local community and you know, potentially as, as part of you know, future generations of Scotland going forward, I actually used to work as a journalist locally in Aberdeen and spent a lot of time interviewing local councillors, MSPs and MPs and, and all the rest. And as I did that, I find myself getting more political, more interested in what was happening locally. And really up until that point, I hadn't been particularly engaged in politics. I think it was... Um, you know, as you say, with the, the referendum and things, it really got a lot more of us thinking about what do we really think and what do we really want for our lives, for our country and for our society. Dominic, why did you get involved? Thanks so much. Um, ultimately, my family's always been quite involved in the Labour Party at a grassroots level. And I've been involved in leafleting from a very young age. And I've seen the changes over the years and I've wanted to give back to a bit of my community. So it's a kind of feeding back and giving something that I think I can give to the community that other people may not be able to do so. OK, let's go back through you all again. So what do you think being young brings to the debate? Because we see plenty of middle-aged men and women uh, on the television and we hear them on the radio discussing topics and they've got their lines ready. So, Dominic, we'll go back the way. What do you think youngsters or younger people bring to the political debate? A fresh perspective. I think um, we think outside the box a bit. You find that some of your older candidates are experienced, but through that experience they refuse to do certain things that would um, go out with the usual realm of their practices. We want to try and bring uh, a new element on trying to get people involved, trying to entice people into being into politics and think of new ways and more exciting ways of introducing people to politics. Katrina, what do you think younger people bring? Because I bet you sometimes someone said, oh, you can't do that. Well, that's too risky. Um, I, you know, I haven't had a lot of experience with people saying that to me. It's mostly been encouraging and I, I tend not to take other people's uh, opinions on, on what I can do. Personally, I think um, I decide what I'm going to do with my life. I think in, in terms of what we can accomplish, it really comes down to representation. Because, you know, when you walk around day to day, you don't just see young people, just see middle-aged people, just see old people. We have a lot of various ages living in our communities and they should be represented. You know, young people in, in Aberdeen, I think 16 to, to sort of folk in their mid-40s make up about 46% of the population. So this isn't a case of, oh, let's get, you know, uh, just young people in, just old people in, just middle-aged people in. We should really all feel represented. And, you know, as the saying goes, you, you can't be what you can't see. It's important that, that people see that you, you can represent your community, you can make a positive change, you can make a difference. And I think that's really what we bring. We bring representation. 
Ben, you're 22 and you're the youngest of the four here. Um, what do you think younger people bring? Well, um, I think the sort of society we live in is very diverse and there's a lot of different kinds of people. And I think it just, we're better represented when that's sort of seen on the council, when we've got a big mix of different people bringing different viewpoints to the table. I think young people in particular, we're a lot more adept with social media and I think social media plays a huge part in politics now in making politicians more accessible, more transparent, more accountable. So I, th I think that is a sort of dimension in politics that, that we really do capitalise on compared to maybe older generations. Max Mitchell, I mean, that's the argument from the other three as well. We can look at things differently. We've got better social media. We are, we're representing not just youngsters, we're representing everybody. What, what do you think younger people bring? No, really, I, I, all I can do is really repeat what the others have said. Um, I think we bring a fresh perspective. Um, we are very active on social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, whatever it is. Um, so we can access a lot of people. Um, I think representation is a really good point, actually, having a variety of people, whether they're young, old, um, men, women, gay, straight, that sort of thing. OK. When you're knocking on the doors and you're canvassing, uh, Katrina, Mm -hmm. What do people say to you? Do they say, oh, you're young? Do people ever bring up youth? Uh, no, I've I've um, always kind of been mistaken as, as being a little bit older than I am. Um, so, <coughs> to be honest, when I knock on doors and say I'm 28, people go, oh, I thought you were in your 30s, which is <coughs> that's great that's to really hear. Nice, isn't it? It's just lovely. So it's it's really nice whenever, you know, it's a blue moon and someone does say, oh, you look quite young. It's, you know, it's a sort of take the party poppers out. It's just lovely. But to be honest, they do the folk just don't seem to see age in the way that they used to. And, and I think they quite like that young people are enthusiastic about, you know, representing their community and helping. And they really like it when you know what's going on locally and when you care what they have to say. So at the moment, uh, from my experience so far, it really hasn't been a barrier, which I think is something to be celebrated and shouted about to say to anyone who's thinking about getting into politics probably will not be a problem for you. You will be all right. Do you think that's true, Ben? Because if you're 22 you're, and if you're going to live to your 88, uh, I always used to think I would know everything by the time I was 27. And I still don't know half of what I think I should know. When you're 22 and you're knocking on the doors, do people go, ooh, you're young? Well, this is something that I really sort of braced myself for when I got into politics. I did think this would be the case, but um, I think it's been much the same for me. If you've got a good message and you've got good things to say, people do respond well to them regardless of your age. I think people are just quite happy to see fresh faces in politics and some new people with a lot of energy trying to get things done. Are they, Max? Are they happy to see fresh faces in politics? Are they happy when it's a youngster knocking on the door? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily refer to myself as a youngster, but um, it's nice when people think that. You're um, 25. Well, you know, I'm getting to that point where I'm feeling less young. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Hang on a minute. I'm, how do you feel less young? Well, you know, you get you're out of creaking, university, you're, you're getting towards 30 anyway. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, people um, certainly, if they're, um, if they're from my... Uh, political persuasion, then they think it's great that I'm so um, well-read and well-versed and all that. If they're not, then they think I'm uh, disillusioned or a bit too naive, that sort of thing. It just depends. Um, but mostly it's been a really, really positive thing. Um, people think it's great. Dominic? Yeah, well, um, I'm almost a bit like Katrina and I'm lucky enough to look a lot older than I actually <laughs> am. Uh, I've got a, a great beard, so I don't get the issue. You have any... a fantastic beard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I don't really have that issue when knocking on doors. People assume that I am a lot older. No one even bothers asking how old I am. I think they think it'd be rude. So um, I can speak from other candidates who are younger who I speak with quite regularly, and they've never had an issue with it. They're actually quite welcomed. Can I ask you a question? I've got two kids who are sporty. And one of the things that's very difficult when you're a sportsman or woman is the rejection that comes. You know, sometimes you're really good, sometimes you're really bad, then you've got to read about yourself in the papers and somebody doesn't like you. And you, you've got to put yourselves up there in a relatively young, at a relatively young age for someone to vote for you or not. So what is that feeling like, Katrina, when you are... When you go to a door and you're relatively... You've probably not been disagreed with a huge amount by, by people you don't know and they disagree with you at the door? Um, it's what you have to just expect, really. I mean, to anyone who's expecting to go door to door or you know, from community centre to, to wherever and, and speak to people and, and just expect everyone to go, oh, you're right, you've got the best ideas and we all think you're great. I mean, you're living in a fantasy land. No one has a job that does that. 
you know, you, unless you're paying people just to say yes to you, you, you that's just not a realistic uh, career outlook. So what I would say is you have to gear yourself up for expecting more often than not people mm. wanting to disagree with you for one reason or another. And all you do is you remember that you're not there to get people to like you. You know, I, I don't go to doors saying to people, you know, be my friend and think I'm lovely. I say, I would really like to work for this community. I would like to represent you. So I'm OK if you don't like me. But if if I had this opportunity, what do you want me to do? You know, what do you want to to happen? What sort of change do you want to see? And, and how are things in your life? So this isn't really a job prospect where you can go around thinking, you know, everyone's going to want a selfie with me instantly because I'm trying. You've got to prove yourself. And I think, you know, if you're a sporty kid, you, sh you should know that better than anyone, that mm. you, you need to work hard and, and get results and you need to prove your worth before anyone will give you any praise at all. Ben Larry, how do you find it at the doorsteps? Well, I've had a, a mixed response from people. What I've noticed is when people are sort of cruel or they don't like what you're saying, it's usually because they're a bit disillusioned with politics anyway, or they sort of don't like your party, or they already have a party they like. So I don't really take it personally. But um, when you do manage to talk to people and convince them and win them over, there's a huge sense of achievement as well, because that, that is a bit more personal. So I don't take it too bad when people don't like me, but it's always good when they do. Dominic, how do you find it? Well, um, I mean, rejection is a part of life, uh, whether that's for job applications or asking a girl out. Young people are used to getting rejected. Um, so when I get in front of the door and someone's not listening to what I want to say, um, <coughs> you just have to take that. I'm quite uh, forward and I'll ask them if they would consider me for a second preference because we're allowed to do that in the local elections. And if I can convince them on one part, maybe for that part, they might want to give me a second preference. Max, how do you find it at the door? Um, I really enjoy it. I mean, even when I don't have a good experience, you know, it's a good story for later at the pub. Um, <laughs> I mostly, mostly, I mean, it has been quite positive. People are really, I mean, particularly in Scotland since 2014, people love discussing politics um, on whatever issue. I mean, there's one that comes up more, um, a lot more recently. Um, but no, I, I really enjoy it, um, whether it's a good experience or a bad one. I don't know where all four of you are in terms of this being a career and, and how that works out, but obviously, you, you know, you've got three quarters of your lives left and you're, you're, you're trying to do this, you're trying to be elected. So mm -hmm. tell me about any potential career path and how far you... I mean, you probably don't want to share it publicly because I, I, I wouldn't, you know. But in terms of getting, getting a career out of this and taking it to the next level, how far do you think you can go? First of you, you Ben, how far do you want to go in this? Well... I just kind of want to win this local election at the moment, try and make as big a difference as I can in my just own Just one ward. game at a time, is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really thinking about much ahead of that at the moment. That's quite long enough for me to think about. Katrina? Um, I'd have to say much the same. I mean, it's not so much one game at a time. Like we're, we're still kind of training for the big match. You know, we're still out there campaigning. In terms of looking forward, though, it's, you know, it's one of these things where it's almost impossible to tell. I... I genuinely didn't think a couple of years ago I would be doing this. I didn't think I'd be a representative of my party. I didn't think I'd be a candidate. You know, I thought I was going to be just in, in journalism. And then I decided that, no, I wanted to get more involved in making a change. And it was through some really good mentoring and encouragement that I was, you know, sort of empowered to, to believe that I could actually do this and I could actually be our candidate. I could actually be someone trying to, to be a representative of the community. So it's... It's hard to sort of say where you're going when, you know, looking back a couple of years ago, I, I didn't think I'd be doing this at all. I'm just wondering though what the career path is, because one of the accusations, Dominic, is that the weakness with many modern politicians is that's all they've been. They've, they've been political researchers, or they've been student politicians and they've gone into politics without ever having to run a company or deal with, a, you know, whatever. What's the career path? Absolutely, John. Um, I think if you're going into politics looking for a career, you're doing politics wrong. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, um, you are there to represent the people who have elected you and you shouldn't be thinking about how you should progress on as a career. You should be thinking about, well, these people have elected me. How am I going to represent them in the best way possible? So for me, it is giving back to my local community and the local council. So what happens then, Ben? Uh, well, you know, there is a career, whether you like it or not, and people become prime minister or first minister. So... Uh, if you don't get elected, what happens? And if you do get elected, what happens? What are the two choices? What happens to your life? <clears throat> well, um, if I don't get elected, I've maybe dodged a bit of a bullet there. I'll, I'll finish my degree and uh, see where that takes me. But if I do get elected, it's just um, 
five years of hard work trying to make as much positive change in my community. I might run for re-election if it goes well, but um, that's a very long time away. Mm -hmm. But you're in it because you want to progress in it, aren't you? Well, I'm, I'm just in it because I've, I live in a town called Moneyfeath. I've lived there my whole life. And I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of cuts locally at the moment that I'm unhappy with and I want to do something about them. So I'm not sure if there is a, a career progression here, but I do want to make some changes in the next few years. All right, Max, what about this element of how far can you go in this business, if it's a business or, or passion or vocation? How far do you think you can go and what happens should you be voted and should you, should you not be voted for? Um, you know, I, I sort of said, look, last year, honestly, like, I'm, I work in a cafe, like I never thought I would be here. And like I've taught English in France before. I've worked at a fringe venue. Um, and so now I'm doing this. I just it's if it goes well, amazing, like to represent um, the part of Edinburgh that I live in would just be phenomenal. Um, I'm doing this mainly to try and benefit my eldest brother's very unwell mentally. And so to try and do anything to make those services better is I think that would be job done. I mean, beyond that, um, friends ask, oh, MSP, MP. No, at the moment, um, councillor I, it would be b better than a dream for me. And so, if not, then I would continue campaigning locally and trying to do a good job. Do you know, I'm fascinated now as to what you've all done. So, <laughs> Dominic, you're 25. Um, what have you done so far? Well, um, I went to university, studied law, and I'm now a trainee solicitor. So that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, you know, that's a big career. Yes, But you'd give it all up to... Absolutely. Um, I would love to take the skills that I've developed from that and be able to use them for being on the council and be able to advocate on people's behalf. And Katrini, have you always been a journalist? Um, well, I went to university in Aberdeen and studied English Lit, and then I found it incredibly difficult to get a, a job that I liked as a lot of people did so actually I worked in a shoe shop for nine months and I did some data entry at the the uni uh, medical research building for about three months and then I did a postgrad in journalism uh, did work experience for a local radio station as I was studying and then started working full-time with them as a, as a journalist so did that for a few years and then went into press and communications so I have in the past couple of years worked in an MP's office and I now work for MPs and MSPs so have done casework, have dealt with some, um, you know, the impact of some policies I don't agree with um, from certain governments and have, you know, seen that you want to sort of change things. So I've I've done a mixture of things. Yeah, but it's, as I say, it's, it's funny, you don't sort of often know where you're going to end up when you are a younger person. You, you think you have a career path, but then something else catches your eye, something else catches your interest. And for me, <clears throat> it was being politically involved in what was going on in my community. Listen to all four of you. Thank you so much for sharing your um, your thoughts. 25-year-old uh, Max Mitchell, 22-year-old Ben Laurie, 28-year-old Katrina McKenzie and 25-year-old Dominic Maguire um, all standing in the local elections. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, the text number is 80295, BBC Radio Scotland. After one, we will have the latest from the Craig White trial. We'll also have the sports panel. Um, but let's have a look at this. Scotland's first full naturist week gets underway.